Hello everyone, welcome to Asura Psych, and today I want to talk about INTJs, INFJs, and the idea that they tend to be the future-focused types, the types that are going to be most concerned with how things unfold over time. The idea for this video actually came from something that happened recently, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but I do think it's an interesting topic to talk about these two types in particular, and why they are related to the idea of time in the future. Let's get into it. So I won't bore you with the details too much, but the idea for this video came because recently I was talking to my wife who is, you know, a few years older than me, and I told her that I wanted to start an investment savings account because, you know, I'm 25 years old and I'd like to have something prepared for maybe when I'm 50, 55, and especially because I don't work a normal job, I wanted to have something pretty much like a 401k to help me for when I retire. And she said to me, you know, that's quite interesting because she said she doesn't see people my age typically thinking about those types of things. You know, usually people don't even start thinking about retirement until they're in their 30s and sometimes even 40s if they start late into the professional uh, work field. And I said, well, yeah, I spend a lot of time kind of preparing for what I should be doing in the next, you know, five, 10 years. And I set kind of goals and standards for where I'd like to be. And I think that this is something that you're going to see that's very common in the introverted intuitive dominant types, and especially the INTJs who tend to be a little bit more goal focused in terms of how we usually see goals, like uh, like corporate goals, business, money, those types of things, than the INFJ who is usually going to have more so uh, relationship focused goals, or um, they're, they're not going to have goals that are as focused on things like money, for example. But I am someone who likes to think forward and I like to try to have a, a, a loose plan for where I'd like to be at a certain time and place. And this isn't going to be something strictly defined like you might see with like an ENTJ because ENTJs I think are the type who are going to set really hard, strict, definitive objectives for themselves. They're going to set those TE objectives really hard and they're going to say, this is when I want that to happen. Whereas with the NI dominant types, you're going to see that they're more likely to say, okay, in five years, I'd like to be in roughly this general area as long as it meets my kind of idea for where I want to be. And I'm a little bit more malleable with that than say those extroverted judging dominant types. So why are INTJs and INFJs in particular the types that are usually going to be future focused? Well, this is because they have introverted intuition as their dominant function. And introverted intuition is the cognitive function most associated with kind of how things unfold over time and the patterns associated with these events that unfold over time. So they're going to be what I would describe the most temporal types, as in they're the most, the type that's the most concerned with time overall and how it's going to unfold, how events are going to happen, these types of things. Because introverted intuition enjoys looking at archetypes and patterns and therefore they project out into the next few years or even the next few decades uh, relatively with the kind of patterns that they have. So they might say for themselves, if I go down this road that I'm on right now, continuing along this pattern, hypothetically, how will it play out and where will I be at this point in my life? And that's what you're going to see with the introverted intuitive dominant types is they quite enjoy this process and it's quite natural for them to do this. This is how they tend to think of the world. They try to project out. Now, this is not going to be something you're going to see much of with the younger introverted intuitives because they haven't kind of grasped the concept of projecting out that far. I mean, to a 13 year old, the next five years of their life might as well be the rest of their life. You know, there's a huge difference between like 13 and 18 and then say like 25 and 35 in terms of how these two uh, differences are perceived in terms of length. So you're not gonna see that much with the younger introverted intuitives, but with the ones who get into their mid twenties, you're gonna find that they start to be quite concerned with the rest of their life. How are things going to unfold? How can I plan for this? Now, unlike ISTJs or ISFJs who tend to almost have like a preparedness anxiety related to the future, where they're going to be kind of preparing for things in case things should go bad, that type of mindset. The INTJ and INFJ is often quite excited and uh, ready for the future. They enjoy taking new steps towards progressing through things. ISTJs and ISFJs tend to more so want to prepare in case something goes wrong. But with the introverted intuitives, there's this optimism usually about the future. And I think that specifically with INTJs, because again, they have that, that goal-focused mindset, they are quite optimistic about their future and they'll usually set their standards and goals pretty high. So now let me give a little example of this in my own life. So at the beginning of the year, the beginning of 2020, I said to myself, okay, well, I have this many subscribers on my YouTube channel, and by the end of the year, I'd like to have X amount of subscribers. To me, what's important is not achieving the goal in and of itself, but making sure that I'm making meaningful progress towards my goal. I'm very focused on making sure that I spend my time in a way that I believe to be meaningful. That doesn't mean that it has to be hyper-efficient. Not everything I do has to be 
uh, focused on this goal. It's not like I'm using extroverted thinking 100% of the time and hyper concerned with the goal in and of itself. But to me, it's more important to make sure that I'm meaningfully progressing towards the goal. And you know, we had things like the virus come up and there was a lot of interruptions I started back in graduate school. And the difference between say an introverted intuitive dominant and an introverted intuitive auxiliary like the ENTJ or ENFJ is that the introverted intuitive dominant tends to be a little bit more malleable with their goals because introverted intuition is more of an ongoing process as the dominant function. It's going to be something that's constantly reassessing their current situation compared to the future projection that they have set. And it's important for them to say, okay, well, I can make changes to this as long as I'm still making meaningful progress towards the overall thing that is important to me. The overall thing that's really important to them is that the thing that really separates, again, a introverted intuitive dominant from, say, an introverted intuitive auxiliary. And it's that the goal of an introverted intuitive dominant tends to be more abstract and less strictly defined. There's no hard set limit usually on the goals of an introverted intuitive compared to say the extroverted thinking or extroverted feeling dominant type. They're going to say, okay, well, I want to make sure that I am this, or I, they're, they're going to have a very generalized goal. So for example, I'd like to increase my subscriber amount. And while I do have a number set, it's not terribly important that I meet that specific number. In six years times, I'd like to be a clinical psychologist. In 50 15 years times, maybe I'd like to have my own private practice. I have these types of goals that are kind of loosely defined and set, but they're not specific. It doesn't, it's not like I'm holding myself accountable to 10 years from now being in some certain position and doing some certain thing, having some certain amount of money. It's just making sure that the overall goal is being maintained and that I'm working and moving towards that goal in a meaningful way. Speaking of planning for the future, I'm going to interrupt for just a few seconds to tell you about something that I've been doing to prepare for my future. I recently started using Acorns, which is an investing app where you can invest money in and you can do dollar roundups with purchases you make where it'll take a purchase that you've made, round it up to the nearest dollar, and then invest that money into the investing account. And I've been using this to kind of prepare for my future. This is what I decided to use as an entry point for creating an investing account and a retirement account. And if you would like to learn a little bit more about this and maybe start preparing for your future, your finances as well, you can check out my referral link down in the description box below, where if you sign up for Acorns and you make your first initial investment, they give both me and you $5 in your investment account to work with. So if you'd like to support this channel while also preparing for your future, consider checking that out. So back on topic, how does an INFJ's NI and FE compare to say an INTJ's NITE in terms of goal progression and thinking about the future? Well, INFJ's are usually going to be, of course, more ethically focused because feeling is a more ethic focused function in general, but they usually are trying to make some sort of social change within their interested field. Whatever it is that they're trying to do, they're going to want to either progress it in some meaningful way, but they also want to make sure that they're including the people within this field that are important to them in these uh, movements. They don't want them to be the kind of solemn person standing atop the tower by themselves who's achieved their goals. This is more so kind of the, you know, like the Nietzschean Ubermensch meme that you see with INTJs. The INFJ is usually going to want to progress with society as a whole or progress society overall. And that's what you see with a lot of like the archetypal INFJs in history, you know, like Gandhi, these kind of sage slash guru types of individuals who like to give people sound life advice and help people progress through their life. And they want to see people grow and evolve over time. I think that's why you see a lot of INFJs, for example, in therapy, because it's a field where you can say, all right, I'm working with somebody who's troubled and I'd like to see them progress and grow as a person over time. And that's usually something that you're going to see INFJs quite enjoy as forward-thinking people that are usually focused on people and their well-being. One weakness associated with both the INTJ and INFJ, though, in their planning for the future is that because of their repressed extroverted sensing, they can often ignore the small details that are important for correctly projecting their plans out far enough ahead. So for example, they might not look at how the specific thing that they're planning for might have variables that they haven't accounted for. And it's hard for me to give like a specific example of that. You can think of something maybe like stock trading where the individual is not going to look at the specific data and information there when they make some sort of long-term information, at least not in a way that's meaningful enough like an ISTP or an INTP might because they have uh, better analysis skills on average. But the, the INTJs and INFJs prefer to kind of just make kind of general ideas for the future instead of specifically planning and therefore 
uh, they're not going to have that, that same accuracy that some other types might have in correcting some sort of trend in relation to the statistical uh, analysis of it or the actual information that's there. They prefer to take the general concept and project that out instead of taking the information in and of itself and then projecting that into some sort of conclusion. And that's why it's called, say, for example, intuition instead of thinking, is that the intuitive types aren't analyzing things in and of themselves for their actual information, what they actually are. The intuitive types tend to take the essence of something that they're working with and then project that out or make some sort of conclusion from that. And there's issues associated with that because when you think of intuition overall, it's going to be something that's occasionally wrong. You're not always going to have very good intuitions about certain things because you're just not going to be able to 100% predict things just in the same way that someone who's going to be using data can't 100% predict what's going to happen all of the times in terms of data trends. They're going to have a good general idea of how likely something is to happen and that's what you're going to see with the intuitive types as well but the intuitive types tend to use more of a gut feeling type of approach to this than any sort of hard information but because they are intuitive dominant types they tend to do this frequently and therefore they tend to be able to tell whether or not something is going to have a good outcome or a bad outcome because they've experienced a lot of these types of situations and their intuition grows over time as they collect more patterns and archetypes into their mind. All right, everybody, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion on INTJs, INFJs, and their kind of ability to look into and work towards achieving some sort of future. I think that these two types in particular, while they are the, the memes for this, they are the types who are most associated with being able to think forward ahead, a lot of other types will do this as well, but I think that these two types in particular are the ones that tend to be the most concerned with their future. They're less likely to be interacting with the now for what it is and more so concerned with allocating their resources to make sure that they can achieve some sort of thing that they want to achieve or work towards some sort of ideal that's important to them. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please let me know down in the comment section below. Tell me what are your plans for the future, whether you're an INTJ, an INFJ, or you're any other type. I'd like to hear what your plans are. Um, also remember that you can check out Acorns if you'd like to get $5 for investing into an investing account, and you can also support this channel by doing that. I would also like to remind people that I do have typing sessions available at my website at surasyc.com if you're interested in working with me to find out what your personality type is and what that means for you. This has been a Sir out of Have a good one.